All right, guys, it's pretty early in the morning. We got the 350Z out from under the awning. Got the Cobra over here. We're gonna get the engine pulled on the Cobra so we can get the engine and stuff out of the crash car, switch it over, and get this thing running finally. So, or well, you know, running without a blown head gasket. <laughs> but check her out. Of course, you know this is my workspace. Back, you know, pulled the 350Z over there and got the Cobra over here. Just took the basic stuff off, got the hood out of the way, got the radiator out of the way. And you know, we'll start doing all the, the really fun chores now. But I have someone that's interested in buying that transmission, uh, the one that's stuck in first gear. And uh, you know, we got the crash uh, convertible car over here. I'm gonna get the engine and transmission out of it so we can just switch everything over. But like I said, we gotta first get that engine and stuff out and then get this engine and stuff out, which this isn't gonna be bad. This is gonna be easy because I'm literally just gonna like cut the front of the car off. So, and just slide the engine out. It doesn't really matter. But on this one, I gotta take my time and do it correctly. I can't wait for my Z. This is this is the car I'm looking forward to. I ordered some more paint for this, so I'll be able to finish painting the bumpers and the fenders and all that stuff and finish putting it together. And I think I'm gonna have enough paint to paint the MR2. I like always, way too much stuff, um, but I'll make it work. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to the cover too. And like I said, this thing's been sitting in the yard for, I think, almost a year now. But so when I got the car to the house, cleaned it up, and so I bought it with, like I said, knowing the transmission was bad, stuck in first gear. But then when I got it to the house, I was like, well, let's make sure it's going to run well before I take the transmission out and go through all this headache. And sure, you know, just the way my luck is. Like I said, cut this thing up and it started smoking like a train, so. <laughs> and then yeah, I was just gonna like put, you know, new head gasket and stuff in it, but I found that crash car, that's just gonna be easier. Bad engine and transmission out, get rid of them. Good engine and transmission in, which I'm actually gonna keep this engine because I think there's, I think it's different. This is a 2001 and that's a 99. The 99 being the year that, you know, they were underpowered and stuff like this. 2001, I think they changed I didn't change some stuff. I think it's like cylinder heads, maybe? Something like that, I don't know. They done something to improve the power. So I'll probably keep this engine and if everything goes well in life, you know, build the bottom end and put a uh, supercharger on it. There we go, then put it back in the car. But anyway, that, that's down the road. So I'm getting way, way, way ahead of myself. But yeah, all right. I'm gonna start, or start tearing some parts off this thing and getting it out and like i said i run across something i'll show you guys but uh the next time you see this thing this engine should be swinging and we'll be that much closer to getting the cover you know together so i'm looking forward to it like i said i went to like mustang week one one year like a long time ago like when the 0304 cobras were like everything and i just remember like seeing those guys like pulling out and like you know ripping on them and stuff like that and it just i don't know kind of become a car I've always wanted. So this this is not an 03 or a 04, but it's as close as I can get. <laughs> but all right, guys, I'm gonna get this thing out of here and just kind of work through it. And look at this, this is crazy. That's a crack in the freaking frame of the car. The rust is kind of, you know, I figured under the battery, that's probably pretty common. But that, is that common with Fords? Look at that. At first I thought it was just a scratch, but that's a straight through crack. Oh well, but yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get to it. Yeah, I don't I don't know why I've been dragging my feet on this project so much, but I have, it's, I've just been putting it off. Like I just don't, don't wanna mess with it. But, so we got both the engines out 
and I got some parts we're going to throw up the engine that we we're going to use. Uh, not as much as I wanted to do, but just enough to get it in the car and make sure it's going to be somewhat solid. Just going to turn the camera around, show you guys where we're at, and show you what I got and the game plan. So, this right here is the bad engine with the bad head gasket. Um, I got stuff everywhere, so every look at I got the clutch. This engine apparently had like a new clutch in it. And uh, this is the transmission that's not stuck in gear. So I just basically stand the transmissions up this way and uh, pressure wash and clean them up and everything. We got the good engine all cleaned up. This thing was pretty grimy. It had oil all over it. I wish I recorded what it looked like, but I mean, you could. This didn't even look like aluminum. It was like almost like it'd been painted black. You can kind of see a little bit of crusty stuff on that one bolt. But we got this thing cleaned up pretty good. It looks really, looks really good. So hopefully it'll be a good engine. So what I got was, of course, the rear main seal. I got the timing cover gasket. Uh, valve cover gaskets, oil pan gasket, and fresh set of engine mounts and transmission mount because as you can imagine the factory mounts are pretty trash. So transmission mount just fell apart. So there's no sense of throwing it throwing that engine back in there with like those old blown out mounts and stuff. So yeah I would have loved to have spent a little bit of money like if I had the money it'd been cool to actually have bought some cams for this thing and at the very least you know freshened up the whole timing chain set up i was going to just like replace the guides and now I'm, i don't even think i'm going to like take the cover off because i don't even want to know <laughs> i'm just going to run it the way it is and just hope for the best so just throw the oil pan gasket on there the rear main seal put the best clutch that i have in there and just fingers fingers crossed that it's going to live for a little while all right so we got a mess i got stuff not like all the other cars and these cars and everything else but this is the old crash cobra like it says collecting junk <laughs> and the sad part is the the nice cars got junk laying all over it too and like i said if the paint job was perfect i would probably be a little irritated but like i said it's not a show car i don't want it to be a show car Yeah, I'm just going to jump right into it and get this engine dressed. Uh, you know, basically, I'm probably going to pull, oh, I got to put those headers on there too. Probably going to pull these valve covers off and just do like uh, wrinkle red just because I have a can of it. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use that. Um, so throw the valve cover gaskets on there because I know they're kind of prone for, or known for leaking. Definitely an oil pan because that's going to be nearly impossible to get to. And like I said, I really should do the timing cover, but, and the front seal. But I'm just not feeling it. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff to take off, and I'm, I might regret it, but we're definitely going to replace the oil pan, the rear main seal, and the valve covers. I might not even do the valve covers. I don't know yet. So, because I really don't care about them looking good. Got to get this thing in and get it running, because uh, I want to take this, uh, take the cover for a road trip. So, I don't want to get into causing more issues by taking more stuff off. <laughs> But right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff knocked out and I will show you guys, you know, once we get the engine in the car and everything, and we'll go from there. So let me get this knocked out real quick. All right, guys, you missed all the action, but the engine is in the car and it's running. Like I said, this one was, it was trying my patience. So I just kind of had to put my head down and focus on the project. Um, like I said, I got the engine, you know, pulled out of the crashed Cobra, this piece of junk right here. And I just threw some uh, fresh gaskets on it, you know, oil pan, rear main seal, timing cover, valve cover, uh, new clutch, and just put all that into the white chassis. So, simple, right? Uh, not so much. <laughs> like I said, this, this would have been an easy project. I just think this car had like a lot of little issues that added up to be a big headache. But like I said, I got the engine in there, the car cranked, you know, it ran fine. I was like, cool going on a road trip so i started loading the car up and i was gonna go to washington dc and i had one of the heater hose coolant hoses um you know just busted while i was sitting there idling uh this guy right here just this little piece of plastic it got brittle and it broke on this side over here 
it's not an issue i think it actually sprayed water into the cab of the car which is going to be part of the story so don't forget about that so got the car loaded up or got that hose fixed got the car loaded up take off for the road trip right so it's like a, i think it's like a an eight hour drive from my house in south carolina to washington dc about four hours in the trip this thing starts running like total garbage i'm like what the heck's going on like almost shutting off going down the road so I pull over and like i said there's like these little grounds that hold to go to the battery i'm like this is probably what it is because this is, looks like junk threw some fresh battery terminals on there and fires up it's running good take off so runs good for probably another i uh, will say uh three hours <laughs> then start sputtering like you're at cruising speed about like 2000 to 3000 rpm car sputtering breaking up um i don't even care at this point i'm tired i'm ready to get to where we're sleeping so i just sold your own and um it's kind of funny if you, if you recycle the key ignition it car will run good for about a minute and start back sputtering so still just cutting the car off cutting the car on driving through <laughs> get there the car sits like for i think you know maybe about a four days while i'm down there or up there don't touch the car get in the car leave still doing the same thing just drive back i was like i'll figure it out when i get home but get home hook my scan hook a scan tool to this thing and it's saying all kind of crazy stuff like um camp position oxygen sensors bank one bank two lean all this all this are bank two bank one rich all this stuff so just by the process elimination i start checking stuff off the list check cam position crank position uh mass air uh i changed out the injectors plugs coil packs like all this stuff i like, couldn't get rid of that sputter and i think what happened like in testing the wires from the sensors to the computer even switched out the computer like i could not figure out what it was like i said this this is why i say it comes in handy if you buy some crash junk like this because you have two of stuff you can change stuff and switch stuff around when you buy a project like this that's been sitting and been messed with by you know who knows but you know who who's messing with the dang thing but i think what happened was when that coolant hose blew it sprayed water into the cab of the car so the car was running good and as I'm, we're on the road trip water somehow got into the ecu connector and as i'm testing stuff here at the connector so i'm testing you know to make sure i got good contact good connection from the computer to the sensors that is saying is bad somehow water got down in this connector and i only found it because like i flicked it like this when i was testing it like somehow and i just saw water like pop up on the top of the connector it wasn't a lot of water but i don't know maybe it run down i have no idea how water got into this thing but like i said i never even you know touched the computer until i was testing stuff so i have no idea how water got in that thing maybe there's like a leak somewhere but i'm a i'm suspect of that like when that hose blew because if it just like boiled water and steam that water somehow got in there maybe it did maybe it did. i don't know but that was definitely an issue so i took my little air chuck spray that connector out clean the connector itself really good you know some contact cleaner and that solved the majority of the issues so I do believe those grounds at the at the um battery were was the original issue because like the car was it was like bucking and shutting down really really bad and the second issue that i got was like i said it was just sputtering and breaking up and it was really just saying can't position your fault and stuff like that so but it was it was trying my patience man like i said that's that's why i didn't really record much um i don't know just getting this engine in is kind of a nightmare because it's such a you know massive engine and knowing that i was going to go on that road trip i was just kind of like scrambling trying to get this thing done so yeah i didn't record much but this year-long project is finally done so i can move on to the fun stuff now like the victory burnout uh, another road trip to where it's actually going to run correctly and not be sputtering and breaking up and doing stupid stuff so but yeah like i said 
maybe I'll just start doing stuff like this and just kind of sharing my uh, experience doing this type of stuff, buying two broken cars and making a good car. Um, it usually works out way, way smoother um, than it did this time. So yeah, maybe maybe this could be something a little different than other all the other 45 million YouTubers or wannabe YouTubers telling you how to do stuff. But I just figured I would start sharing my experience with these cars with you guys. Uh, maybe work out a little better because I don't really know what I'm doing. I just want to kind of spread the message out there that if I can do it in this yard with the bare stuff I have, anybody can do this. Like I said, this Cobra was definitely more of a challenge than the other projects that I had. I just, I think it was just a bunch of little things that added up to be something that was an absolute nightmare for me. <laughs> and plus the fact that I had to deal with it. I mean, it only, it ran good. Once I got the engine and stuff done, like I said, it, it ran good for probably, like I said, about four hours. And then I was just cruising down the highway and it just started like shutting off and like sputtering really bad, which like I said, I think it was those, those grounds on the, uh, the battery. I said, fix that. And like I said, it ran good for a little bit longer. And then it was just nightmare after that, <laughs> but it, it took me a solid, once I got home, it took me a solid two weeks to get this thing into a, uh, a good running car so yeah all right guys that's it for me i'll uh i'll leave you with a, a quick little sound clip of the uh the car running i still have it in a massive exhaust leak that i will get fixed um but yeah like i said i'm sure to end with that uh just a quick little rev of the car and the next video we'll go on another road trip get that victory burnt out in and some other little things I want to do to the car. So I guess I got some chassis braces that I want to throw on there. Probably take it to a drift event. Just stuff like that. Just have fun with the car because I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to hang on to it or try to get rid of it to pay for some of the other projects like the white arc seven. But we'll just have to see. But yeah, I'll, I'll sprinkle in a little bit of the uh, the vacation just like when we're actually leaving and riding around stuff like that. So I got to see a lot of cool stuff. Even though the car was running like crap, it was still a good time to actually, you know, take something like this that's been sitting for probably, I don't know, six years. Uh, it's been sitting for a year in this yard and it's been sitting for like four years in the place where I bought it from. So there's no telling how long this car has been sitting. So but yeah, that's it for now, guys. Uh, just appreciate you for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next one.